this is the the lower the lower strut which it comes here. Mm -hmm. This is, um, as I say, um, it's the first guitar I'm going to build or I'm building or making, um, following a precise Torres pattern. Uh, the strutting and the shape is no actually Torres. It's my own shape, but all the inner structure is following Torres pattern, and I just fit in the low. Um, uh, oblique bars at the bottom, which is the same as these ones, and then I'll be fitting the um, these other bars for the mm -hmm. um, the harmonic bars that will go there. Okay, so and uh, all the the wood is being especially selected. You could see the beautiful grain, you know. Now I have to shape. I I use the 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 wood for the soundboard is came practically from the same log and using um, wood for this soundboard that um, I bought in Switzerland in 1971. Now this piece of wood is one of the, the best soundboards I have in my possession and if the camera could pick it you see what the Germans say uh, Hazel Fichte, which is now this wood is is um, split from the log, so we have all the the wood rays in the direction of the right side of the tree, and um, is well, it's a little bit irregular on the grain, but to me that has a character that I, you know excites me see and this is um, a piece of wood um, as I said that I bought from it in Switzerland 1971 the thickness and of course they are mine they vary from 1.80 to 2.5 um, you know throughout um, the, so the same wood is from the same plant and um, what I got is already ready to be assembled the wood has to be selected in a proper way because in um, selecting the, 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 the wood with a radial direction and perf perfectly perpendicular uh, wood rays in a longitudinal direction, with that you conserve more energy from the string that the wood is not properly cut. In a guitar and an instrument like this, you have to use whatever little fraction of that energy to enhance the quality and volume of the guitar. And this is where I think is we should be working on getting to know all these factors rather than inventing something that already been invented or it doesn't really do anything for the promotion of the good quality sounding instrument. Mm -hmm. And that's my approach, you know. Because you see, um, if um, um, there is a tendency for people to say, oh, the old days, the old times, they were better because they're old craftsmen and all that sort of thing. It's lovely. It's a romantic idea. And uh, what we had to find out is what the use of the method has any va validity in the guitar making when we uh, compare it what the scientific reports that the, you know, the scientific had given us. And what is I found in now is that uh, the many of the things that the old craftsmen did, they had validity today. For example, the selection of the wood, they knew exactly. So now what we have to do is to really tell people how to get that, that wood, you know, that, that wood to enhance the qualities of the guitar. And this is my approach. Um, like everything else in in this life, one knows what we think, our uh, prejudice about things, because that's what we've been told. And another way, another way is to really corroborate those statements. And this is what I found that the guitar well is in a position, it's been for the last 150 years, was that a guitar maker goes and puts a little bar here, and he says, oh, I improve the treble. Now that, to me, unless you prove that, um, in, in the sound, and then if you can't avail it with the, the um, inform 
on that particular result. That is when we, that statement will have credence, you know, will be creditable. And uh, the guitar, anything say, anything goes. We say, we do this, oh, the guitar is better, I invented this. And, and uh, that is not quite a way to go about it, you know. The, the, old, the proof of the pudding, as they say in England, is when the instrument is on the concert hall, and that instrument tells his own story. And when you get goose pimples, you know, on the flesh, because it really has, and, and that, how can you analyze that? How can you, if you take a musical note, you could say it's thin, thick, uh, rounded, you know, strident, powerful, but that's only prejudice. We cannot justify anything. So we have a principle that is the Torres pattern, so to speak, where we already had a fundament on the instrument, and from that is where we got to elaborate and try to improve the, the quality of so this pseudothrain structure. And that now, in, as far as I am concerned, I have um, informed myself as much as possible what the scientific report on, this, on the woods and everything indicates the way to follow. And uh, to me, the, the selection of the, the piece of a spruce for the soundboard pro properly air dry, that is, you keep it in, in conditions where the, if you like, it's open to the air a little bit, but not to the rain or to the, the sunshine. And it, it acquires a quality, which again is, is there. This is a thing that I um, have a how's the precedent that that changes. Um, I don't. I, to me personally, um, the only wood for the soundboard of the Spanish style made guitar. I don't mean necessarily made by Spaniard. I mean a Spanish style guitar in the Torres model, if you like. It's got no alternative but to use a good, decent piece of spruce. For me, that is just like a Bible, if you, if you like, you know, for the Roman Catholic. And um, all this, <coughs> like Western Red Sea, that, uh, um, to me, I respect the people who use it, and, you know, I accept it because I have nothing I can do, but to me, it doesn't really have the guts or the character or the good piece of spruce. And we have that in the recording, that's a thing that we have um, information to go about it. We've got a lot of recorders pre the digital era because they, you know, it, it's changed everything. But it's still in the old recordings, we could compare the sounds and we could, um, in fact, analyze the harmony built up and all those, those, all those other things we could do. And that's what I think the scientific lobby and the people they have to do today. You know, we had to come and analyze uh, the different uh, sound um, peculiarities of every type of guitar. And then we see how the instrument developed. Mm -hmm. <laughs>